jumping into the fantasy news. First and foremost, new Robert Jordan book has been announced. I'm super excited. I will get into that more in a minute, but first, quickie news. Apparently, the new Star Trek that's going to have Picard, and yes, Patrick Stewart will actually be playing him, will be radically altered from the next generation, meaning his situation will be rather different. Very interesting. They're apparently setting it many years after the end of the next generation, but really, with how Patrick Stewart doesn't seem to age, you could have just picked it up like a year later, and I kind of would have bought it. Coquettish. But good for him, I'm excited for seeing this. A little bit opinionated on the fact that CBS seems to be milking their one super valuable IP that's going to draw people to their streaming service, Star Trek, as much as possible, because they've also announced a spin-off show for Star Trek Discovery, a series that's been met universally by Star Trek fans as eh. Mild shock. But I'm hoping with Patrick Stewart attached, maybe he can guide the show into feeling actually more Star Trek-y than Discovery currently does with all of its shoot bangs and pow pows. Apparently, Stellan Skarsgård is set to play the villain in Dune. That, that's the story. Moving on. Another adaptation, of course, is coming down the road. This one is called Shadow and Bone and is also being gobbled up by Netflix. So Netflix has more than a couple fantasy adaptations in the works, and I'm interested for that. I know they're trying to grab on to the next Game of Thrones spotlight, as many are, and they know there's this mass fantasy audience out there. But Shadow and Bone is really not as well known as many other things they're planning to adapt, so I'm wondering what the strategy is here. Maybe they just see the source material, have a lot of faith in it, and they think, hey, this will be huge and great, which makes me curious, mostly just based off the fact that I haven't really heard of it before. If you haven't seen already, the Game of Thrones trailer was released. It, it looked very dramatic and intense. I, I, I'd show it, but I'd get copyright striked and I really can't afford another one of those. So I'll throw up this image and I'll, I'll describe what happens. Mist, mist rolls in and, and Jon Snow draws his sword. Arya draws needle and, and Sansa stares aggressively. That's, that was the trailer. It didn't, it didn't really show much, but it set the tone. And I don't know why I describe it. Just go watch it. Next news, there's a rumor floating around that the Black Widow movie might be rated R. Now, when I first heard this, I balked at the idea. No way. Disgust with self. The MCU will not go R, but after thinking about it, the hype of the third female-led superhero movie isn't quite as intense as the first and second. So they might be trying to go for a new marketing angle here in making Black Widow, a character who has a tragic dark past, be the first R-rated female superhero movie could be a good marketing strategy. And I wouldn't entirely dismiss this rumor outright. Probably this is something they just leaked to see what people's reactions would be, and my reaction is, that makes sense for the character Black Widow, I have nothing against it. I know some people like the fact that the MCU is fully family-based, but just, just don't go see this one. It's a prequel for Black Widow, it's not going to be crucial to larger MCU if you have little kids, just, just, just don't take them to see this one. But that being said, I still have my doubts that this is actually going to be R. Next news! In very exciting adaptation news, The Gentleman Bastards has been picked up by Phoenix pictures. A group I, I know nothing about. In terms of series that I think are very adaptable to movies or TV shows, I think Gentleman Bastards would be fantastic, and I'm very much so looking forward to seeing what they could do with one. It's cinematic in how it's written, the plot is not typical fantasy, so it could easily stand out from the competition, and overall, already, hype is real. Even if it's just okay, I want to see Gentleman Bastards and Locke Lamora and Jean brought to the page. I'm looking forward to it. Let's, let's break this happen. Let's, let's, let's have, let's have us some bastards that are gentlemen in, in live action, please. Not animated. Please don't. Please don't. In rather sad Gambit fan news, the Gambit movie has been officially shelved and again been delayed. This has been in the talks for like a decade or more now, and no one is really surprised to hear this is being axed. The MCU now is absorbing the mutants, and whatever they did have planned for a Gambit movie probably wouldn't fit in, and I'm honestly okay with this. I wasn't really excited to see what Sony could do with Gambit, and I'd be more interested with characters who deserve the spotlight that they have not received yet from Sony being the mutants we see usher in mutant hood to the MCU, and Gambit would be a fantastic character to lead the introduction of mutants into the well-established Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
And that brings me to a quick news theory. I do think that the MCU will bring in mutants, that's why Marvel bought the IP back, but it's going to probably be triggered by an event in my theory. I don't think they're just going to randomly start people having mutant powers. I think it'd be much more cinematic and interesting for the story for a result of maybe the snap bringing everyone back or something along those lines that mutants start occurring. Make it something that's kind of a happening in the now, a new situation raising the stakes and piquing interest for the universe. Don't just say like, oh, you know how we've been watching this universe for literally nearly a century all the way back in World War One. well well actually there were mutants the whole time that that would be kind of lame I don't want that make them a new phenomena that's my theory I think they're gonna do it that way next news there is a Loki TV series in the works which I actually think lends to the idea that Loki really is dead for good in the MCU apparently the TV series might be narrated by Tom Hiddleston very cool but I don't think they'd give this character its own spin-off TV show for on Disney plus unless he was not going to be relevant in the MCU at all anymore so in my opinion Loki probably gone in the MCU for good <laughs> And this little spinoff series will be an interesting little prequel to his life in the MCU. Again, another news theory slash news story. Next news. Apparently, Anne Hathaway is set to star in an adaptation of The Witches. Again, something I've never heard of. And it's being directed by Robert Zemeckis, someone who has helmed very great movies and movies. And for graphic novel fans out there, and for fans of Neil Gaiman, it looks like his story Snow Glass Apples will be adapted by Dark Horse, one of the highest critically acclaimed publishing companies in comic books and graphic novels in general, and Neil Gaiman being one of the best currently working fantasy authors. This is, this is nothing but awesome. All positive fantasy news today. It's all good! This just literally put in the Fantasy News Discord channel. If you want to send me a news story, go to the Discord, go to the Fantasy News channel. It looks like another Lord of the Rings movie will be made. But wait! Not actually about Lord of the Rings. A movie about Tolkien and his life starring Nicholas Holt. Holt. Holt? Holt? I don't know how to say that, but him. This is actually Lord of the Rings news I'm very positive about. J.R.R. Tolkien lived a phenomenal, incredible life, and of all the authors who have lived, he's definitely in my top five for seeing movies about their lives being made, from fighting in the war to influencing fantasy forever, and in general, just being a awesome, badass author. I want to see his life put to screen. I hope it's done justice. Moving on, next news. Apparently, Charlotte Rambling is to play the Reverend Mother in the Dune adaptation. Again, Dune's not entirely my thing, but I'm excited for you fans, and she's a pretty great actress, so that's just exciting all around. A lot of positive news. This is a great day for fantasy. And now for the main story of this episode of Fantasy News, a new Robert Jordan novel called Warrior of Altai, I believe, but someone will correct me on, I'm sure, is being released. This is incredibly exciting for Robert Jordan fans, Wheel of Time fans, fantasy fans in general. This man has had one of the most influential writing voices for the genre period. And seeing a new standalone work from him, a self-contained story that apparently has themes that were later explored in The Wheel of Time, is going to be awesome. Even if it's not quite as huge and epic as The Wheel of Time was, even though this is said to be an epic, it's going to be great to see the evolution of these ideas that Robert Jordan had that later laid the seeds for the unbelievable tree that is The Wheel of Time. That was weird. Why'd I say it like that? Tor Books just announced this today on Twitter. I, for one, could not be more thrilled to see this, and I'm just incredibly excited. And I think we all as fans have a mixture of feelings about this. One, we miss Robert Jordan. We loved his works dearly and his interviews. He always seemed like a very well put together, smart and passionate, kind man. And getting another opportunity to kind of have something that brain put into the world it's just great all around. Um, this is something I'm very happy to talk about. And there might even be a full video about on my channel in the future. But... I'm just happy to tell you guys that this is happening and we're getting another glimpse into the mind of Robert Jordan through the release of this story that uh, is previously unseen by the audience. Let's go ahead and be excited for this one. Hope you guys like this episode of Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already and hit the Patreon if you want to go ahead and support what we do here at Fantasy News. Let me know what news I missed in the comments down below. Shoot it over to me in the Discord server if I happen to miss anything. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. On a quick side note, I just wanted to thank everyone who's a new subscriber. We've grown quite a bit in the last month. 
I think it's been the, by far the fastest uh, period of growth my channel has ever had. And I know quite a bit of that is due to this show, Fantasy News. You know, people like kind of getting kept up to date. And with the recent adaptations and everything, it just has kind of been the perfect time for me to start this show. I actually had no idea, obviously, that all these shows were going to be being announced during this time. But just from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. I appreciate the growth. I promise I will not disappoint you. I'll keep doing this. And trust me, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do on my channel. And like, share, all that stuff. Anyone who you think will like seeing the fantasy news brought to them. It's why I do it. And of course, any suggestions on how I should change the show, what I should bring in, is massively appreciated. Constructive criticism is never dissuaded in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much. Much love. See ya.